I'm Brenda Morris and I went vegan back when I was 18 years old. My first experience, my, the first time I ever met a vegetarian in my life, I was 16 years old and I worked at a pizza place. And one of my coworkers mentioned casually that she didn't eat meat. And unfortunately, she was a little bit snobbish about it. And I said, you can live without eating animals? And she said, yes, it's quite easy. So I went home that day and told my mom that I wanted to stop eating animals. And my sister, who was only 14 at the time, joined me. And I never realized how lucky I was to have someone do it with me, but all growing up for the last 30 years, my sister and I went veg initially and then vegan two years later in college. So because I've been vegetarian and vegan for so long, I never appreciated the health benefits of it because when you're 16 years old, you don't have all the bad things happening anyhow. So it wasn't until I became older and I have never been sick in my adult life. And I can't ever attribute that to veganism because perhaps that would have been the case otherwise, which I'll never know. But I always feel good and I, I want, that's one of the reasons I was happy to share in this project because I want other people to feel as good as I have. So I love sharing with others the benefits of veganism because not only are you aligning your values, with your lifestyle, but in the interim, you also become potentially healthier and happier. Personally, I feel that having a mission in life, whatever your mission is, makes everything easier. And for me, veganism has been my mission for my entire life. Having a reason to get up in the morning, have a reason to do things that might, you might not feel like doing it. I remember one time, it was in the middle of playing for the Veg Fest, and a school wanted a volunteer to come and talk to parents about going vegan and healthy eating and I didn't want to go. I wasn't in the mood, I was burnt out and I went begrudgingly and I had the time of my life. Everyone was so appreciative because it's a message a lot of times you're not going to get from the media and from other people because there's no money to be made in sharing eating healthy food. So some, I took a, a, a very negative attitude and it flipped when I saw how how great people were to hear that message and to be part of a movement again. So I feel like how, being part of a movement has been a big part of my life and I, I don't know that other people who aren't in the movement appreciate it until they meet us and they say, gosh, I would like to be part of this, if nothing else, for the social aspect and to have a common mission. I think it's important that people acknowledge that their actions do have an impact on others. Because one of the things I think people feel offended by when they say, why do you mind if I'm not vegan, if I don't share your values, I don't bother you about yours, but their actions actually do have an impact on others. To forget that big piece is huge because we're all drinking water that is polluted by animal agriculture and we all are sharing an, an experience with fellow beings, animals and otherwise, that if you choose to eat them, it, it does affect your fellow man. I think if if as society we acknowledge that all life is important and beautiful, that it's, it's good for your, for your neighbors. For years I focused on ethics exclusively and I feel that I didn't do the best job in doing that because people wanted to say what's in it for me. So one of my favorite hobbies has been giving out tofurkey for the last 20 years. And I love when people who never thought they would want to have vegan food try it for the first time and they look shocked that this is vegan. So it's, it's great for them to make the connection. And I, and I go through the spiel that this is not an apple. I'm not saying that every vegan food is healthy, but if you're looking to transition, it's wonderful to know that any craving you have today can be satisfied with a vegan alternative. So anytime there's a health fair, we can tie in to the aspects of this vegan sausage doesn't have any cholesterol, no saturated fats. And I think that that message is becoming more common. But when we were doing this 20 years ago, people didn't know these alternatives existed. Uh, and they've obviously come a long way as of late. Then also, if you had the environmental field, we would still show up for Earth Day and give out the vegan sausages. And again, people love hearing that they're not having as much of an impact on the environment by eating these foods. I've been part of the Vegetarian Society for 20 plus years, and I'm also the organizer of the meetup group. And I think it's so important to have 
a, a community of people that support you. I've been blessed to have a family <laughs> that supports me, but I've found out through organizing meetups that not everybody has that. And I feel like that's one of the reasons a lot of times people try going vegan and it doesn't stick because they have no support at home. They don't have anybody who gets it. Where I always had my sister and my parents, but people who don't have that, they come to meet up and it's so nice to feel like you're at home with other people who get it. If they say, I. I saw a fly today and I didn't swat it, I carried it outside, you're not going to be laughed at. <laughs> I haven't had challenges in being vegan, but again, it's, I'm one of those people that likes challenges, so perhaps that which would be considered a challenge, is, I didn't even notice it. I, I like, um, it's easier to navigate now, but even when we didn't, I liked trying to find something. I, I used to work for a big financial firm and they would take us to steak dinners and they were always surprised when I would show up and they said, oh, there's nothing here for you. And I, I said, no, the, the chef will find something and going out. And I remember most of the time they would come up with a pasta dish, but one steakhouse, they didn't know what to give me. So came out with a big plate of broccoli. And um, I, I, I love broccoli, so it wasn't much of a challenge, but that's hard for me. I don't feel like there's been any challenge. My family has been supportive. My dad used to tease me if he ever said you were cold. He would say, you're not getting enough meat, but it was in a loving way. My family has volunteered at the Veg Fest with me for the last 17, 18 years, and my friends always say, you're so lucky. I never realize until I see how other families aren't always supportive. My dad, he was 70 years old going through chemo, and he still stood with me giving out vegan literature. And one event, we were giving out sausages, and he knew I was going to be disappointed if we went home with any sausages because I wanted to give them all out. And the, and the event was ending and he took the plate and walked to every single vendor and to make sure that we went home with no sausages. And vendors who were getting ready to pack up for the day, they hadn't had food all day, so they were grateful to him. And my mom always does the children's activities. My sister does the children's activities at the Veg Fest. So everyone in my family has really got on board. My brother still teases us, but he's, he's a, you're always going to have the one person in the family who teases. But. My biggest regret is when I went vegan, I was a hateful vegan. I was upset that other people didn't get it, and that came through. And it wasn't until my baby brother said to me, he said, I will never go vegan because of people like you. And that was a dagger in my heart and he changed me. And when I tell him that he said that, he doesn't even remember saying this. It was so long ago, but I needed to hear it because I wasn't showing the positivity. I was focusing on the negative. Why aren't you vegan? Why don't you care about animal suffering? And because of him and those words that were a dagger in my heart, I changed. And since then I've been a happier person, but being an angry vegan doesn't convert people. It does just the opposite. I think a lot of times people start off so excited about going vegan, they meet someone, they see a film, something clicks with them, and they are very enthusiastic, but then as time goes by and they don't have a community of support, their, their passion falls by the wayside. And that's one of the reasons I love organizing the meetup group because, again, you have a community of people that can help support you. And I know at Thanksgiving when friends, when family go home, if anyone's giving them a hard time, they can text each other and let each other know, all right, someone's teasing me about this, what am I going to do? Or just count to 10. But to have that community support, I feel is vital because it's really hard to do it on your own. And I feel like a lot of people I've met over my life did it by themselves. And I had my sister, and I don't think I appreciated growing up how lucky I was to have someone who was on the journey with me. I am the most boring eater. When I worked at a big brokerage firm years ago and everyone was afraid of getting laid off, they said, if we lose our jobs, we're going to have to eat like Brenda does. I love rice and beans. <laughs> I could live on quinoa and beans. I, that's my staple. I will eat every day to my heart's content, but I mix it up and put different vegetables in it, different sauces in it. But I've been eating, gosh, quinoa and or rice every day for probably 30 plus years. And I'll go out to eat with my friends to be social and I'll have a veggie burger. I'll eat the latest and greatest but I always migrate back to my foods and that's what makes me happiest. I think 
find someone who you can have as a mentor and if there's no one in your immediate social groups there's coaches nowadays where you can have someone to help you along the journey that's a lot better than I am I feel like I've been a bad coach and mentor I'm better with groups but if someone wants some, that one-on-one -on -one, Google vegan mentor vegan coaches and again join your meetup whenever I travel I look up the vegan meetup and I've met the most amazing people all over the country just going out to dinner with them one time I was in Kentucky and I didn't know that Kentucky had vegan food which sounds ignorant I admit that now but they were such a vegan friendly town that the whole six weeks I was staying there the meetup group took us to a different vegan restaurant because I was in town and they wanted to show me what um, Louisville had to offer so I would say find others who are on the same page and it makes it a lot easier and fun I love reading and one of the books that I read recently that I absolutely love was Clean Meat by Paul Shapiro. And I thought, why do I need to read this? I already know everything in here. It was so inspiring. And if you're having a tough day as an activist and you feel like, oh, this is never gonna happen, you read that book and you're so inspired that we are on the brink of change. So that, and also Game Changers. I am awful about watching documentaries. I feel like, oh, I already know all this. But Game Changers, I think, was a great movie to show people how easy it is and how you can actually feel better going vegan. It was inspiring. So I love being part of the chili cook-off. It's this huge event in Richmond where people come from all over to eat chili, drink beer. And we used to joke that it's the one event where we're going into enemy territory because most of the people there, you could say with a high degree of certainty, never try vegan food. So I would give out vegan chili all day. And it was funny because the more people drank, the more receptive they came to it. And one year I was working in Germany and I had to fly home for one night to get to the event, but I thought it was so important to do it. And you see people's faces and people who normally wouldn't come up to the table came up and Veg Fund said in order to fund the event that you had to give out literature. And I said, I don't want to waste literature. These people are going to throw it out. And I was so wrong. It was one of my happiest things to see every single person who was offered literature when they took the vegan chili sample all took the literature as well. So I felt like that was, again, people who normally aren't going to look up game changers, they're not going to read clean meat. They were at this event to have fun and exclusively and they all wanted the literature. So when we started doing the Veggie Fest 17 years ago, one of my cousins, my very close cousin, she used to tease us. She said, Veggie Fest, what do you do, march around a park with carrots? And she actually would tease me so much that she sent me slippers in the mail that were of carrots. Cut to so many years later, Audra now coaches vegans, has two vegan babies, and she's like one of my biggest supporters in everything I do activism-wise, and now she's doing it herself. But she went from completely teasing everything to do with what we did activism-wise to becoming one of our biggest cheerleaders. <gasps> I would never eat another animal. Never, never, never. It's been 30 years. There'd be no reason for it. I think people automatically assume if you're vegan, you're an animal person. And while I am a 100% animal person now, for the first 30, 40 years of my life, I was not. It wasn't until I adopted Ginny. And people would say, oh, you must love dogs and cats. And I would be hands off, get your dog off of me. <laughs> your dog is drooling on me. And I would say, I respect their right to live, but I don't need to be around them to respect their right to live and the, until she changed my life. So I think it's really good for people who are not quote unquote animal people by nature to all of a sudden have that consciousness awoken in them. Today, I feel like it's so important to remember that we're all in this together and there's not us and them. And I was talking to somebody the other day and they were complaining about everyone on unemployment benefits not working. I said, be careful what you say because you've been one of those people, I've been one of those people. And I think that can happen with vegans and meat eaters. And I know I've been guilty of it where us and them is different. And anytime you do that, you're hurting yourself and you're, off, you're especially hurting others because there isn't us and them. We are all one. I love Gandhi's quote about the progress of a nation depends on how we treat animals and I put that on every social media blog I can as a as a response when someone's saying something anti-vegan I say well we need to raise the bar for our whole world because as Gandhi said it's important for civilization